Nowadays, the vast, vast majority of the people who watch YouTube probably do not know the name Arliss Finch. For those who do, they probably only have a few faint memories of him playing with Jay Schlatt or Obersuit before getting exposed for grooming in June of 2020 and quickly deleting in all of his social media. Arliss Finch has turned into some of the most popular content creators so far this decade. All he had to do was to not be a total dick and ride the wave of success along with them. But instead, he has succumbed to his insecurities and ended up losing all of his internet fame. Today, I want to detail the rise and fall of Arliss Finch, the numerous controversies he got himself into, how his legacy affects the YouTube community today, even after he has been forgotten. Before I begin, let me give just a little clarification. Not much is known about Arliss Finch's actual career on YouTube. His YouTube channel was deleted, and there are only a few snapshots in the Wayback Machine, which does not give as much. His Twitter account was also deleted, and that wasn't saved either. His Twitch channel is still up, but it is completely blank. Again, the Wayback Machine does not tell us much. The only real sources of Arliss Finch even existing on the internet are secondary sources, so forgive me if I get some details wrong in this video. As previously stated, not much is known about Arliss Finch's career on social media, especially pre-SMP Live. However, at some point, Arliss became friends with a small commentary YouTuber Jay Schlatt, who featured in his video a tribute to Minecraft. That video blew up and helped spawn a wave of Minecraft nostalgia. Although people in events like SMP Live, Bilza, and Keemstar are credited with bringing Minecraft back, this video was really the first big break for Minecraft's revival. This video also helped boost Jay Schlatt to the spotlight, and through this video, the small Reddit reaction YouTuber Call Me Carson found out about Jay Schlatt. When Carson and his friend C Scoop were starting their new SMP, they decided to invite him despite never previously interacting with him. Schlatt became good friends with Carson and C Scoop, and Schlatt was then allowed to invite some of his own friends to the server. He invited people like a panda, astrocyst, and of course, Arliss Finch. Arliss Finch began to stream SMP Live on Twitch, and he also uploaded some of the highlights to his channel. He began to grow a small community around himself, but very quickly things went south. A tweet longer made by ALMAO, which I have linked in the description, details an incident involving Arliss Finch and a small YouTuber, Brint Revised. To summarize, Arliss found out Brint's real name when he was on a Discord call with him one night and used that information to blackmail Brint into deleting tweets that he did not like. Eventually, Arliss straight up posted Brint's real name, effectively doxing him, and he showed no remorse for it at the time. In fact, during the event, he even mass reported Brint's Twitter account, getting it temporarily locked. Arliss did end up apologizing to Brint, although I could not find his apology. Immediately after that, Arliss got into beef with another streamer, Yahia Mice, and this incident is also detailed in the Twit Longer. Yahia was added to SMP Live in May of 2019. He did not really know anyone in the server. He had a very hard time adjusting to the server, and he ended up getting kicked literally because he was unfunny. However, because he got kicked for being cringe, Arliss Finch thought it would be a good idea to constantly make fun of him and send his followers to attack Yahia. He did this a lot, and I do mean a lot. His defense for doing so at the time was that Yahia was unfunny and griefed Arliss on a Minecraft server once. Now, Arliss ended up facing very little repercussions for his actions. As mentioned previously, Yahia got kicked from the server for being unfunny and cringe. When he made a video trying to explain his side of the story, a lot of people just shrugged it off. And to be fair, Yahia did try to group in all of SP Live with Arliss, and really they were nowhere near as bad as him. Arliss Finch did end up apologizing to Yahia Mice, however, and after the Yahia Mice incident, it seemed like Arliss had actually turned his life around. He seemed to have learned his lesson from Yahia and Brent and remained controversy free for the next year. During this time, he became friends, or at least associates with, even more big names, including Wilbur Suit, Just the Minx, and Nihachu. Arliss Finch also joined the ill fated SMP Earth, although that is a story for another video. Things seemed to be going well for Arliss. He was steadily growing on Twitch with just over 17k followers and averaging 192 views a stream. If he continued to grow his content, I feel like it was very likely he would have blown up in the same way all of his new friends have done. However, then things took a turn for the worst. On June 1st, many, many girls started to come out with their experiences with Arliss. The experiences ranged from Arliss acting like a man-child to Arliss straight up sending them sexual messages. Now, there are a lot of girls who came out with their Arliss Finch stories. So I linked all the stories I could find in the description of this video, and to be honest, I still think I missed a lot. He literally abused more girls than Katerino had boyfriends. It is crazy considering everything Arliss was accused of supposedly happened just in the previous year leading up to the callouts. To summarize all the accusations around him, Arliss Finch had cultivated a very toxic community around him. He would straight talk people in his discord in his stream, talk badly about them behind their back, and sometimes even alienate them from the community. It seemed like in order to become friends with Arliss in the first place, you either had to give him money or draw him fan art. And a few of the people I saw implied that Arliss would masturbate to that fan art. 
of people, usually minors, drew of him. Whenever someone would confront him about this, he would always play the victim and manipulate the person into thinking they were the bad guy. Arliss would also send a lot of sexual messages to his fans, some of which were underage. Some of the low lights including calling a 16 year old girl a whore and that he wanted to tie her up for sexual foreplay. And trying to get a different 16 year old girl to send him a picture of his leather jacket in exchange for his nudes. He even ended up in a relationship with a few of his fans where he emotionally abused them more, although from what I have seen, all of his actual girlfriends were of age. Arliss was also super sensitive and any comment that could be theoretically perceived as an insult Arliss took offense to. And to top it all off, Arliss was also still racist. After some of the stories came out, Arliss put out an apology to longer that was quickly written off as being insincere, manipulative, and pretty much a copy and paste from his apology to Yahia Mice a year prior some words changed. After that, Arliss deactivated Twitter, deleted YouTube, and went MIA on all other social media. Of course, more and more girls kept coming out with their own stories during the following days. Some of Arliss's friends like Poke and Sophie Texas made statements disavowing Arliss's behavior. I do not think Arliss's bigger friends like Jayslat or Ober ever commented on it, and to be fair, there's really not any obligation to. And just like that, Arliss had disappeared from the internet. One quick thing before I move on. From the research I did, I not actually find any accusations of Arliss straight up grooming someone. I assumed that it happened because every mention of him I've seen since the incident people have called him a groomer. But all I found were people saying he had been accused of grooming by unnamed accounts I could not find. What Arliss did was super messed up, especially since he dated so many girls, but for now I've seen, he not tried to meet up with any of his underage fans to commit a sexual offense, which is what grooming means. Now that I have gone over the rise and fall of Arliss Finch, I want to talk about the most interesting part of the controversy. I cannot help but think how lucky we got with all the girls exposing Arliss in June of 2020. Just think about how close we came to having Arliss in a dream SMP. As previously stated, Arliss was friends with JSLAT and also done Twitch streams with Robersuit, Nihachu, and Just the Minx. And since June of 2020, they have all completely exploded in popularity. During the days leading up to Arliss's downfall, Minx had 100k Twitch followers, Nikki had around 90k Twitch followers, and Wober had around 380k followers. In just 9 months, Nikki and Minx both reached over 1 million followers and Wober is now at 2.5 million. That's to think that 9 months ago, Arliss was once in their same circle of streamers was insane. Imagine if Arliss did not get caught until 6 months later. How much could he have grown since then? Would he have gone on Lover Host? Would he have gone on a Dream SMP? How many more people could he have hurt? Questions like these are why this story is so interesting to me. We could have had a controversy on the same level as Basher vs or Line Maker, but instead Arliss has been mostly forgotten the time. Another interesting factor to think about is how Arliss would have dealt with stands. I think the situation with Arliss is the prime example for why stands are so dangerous. Nowadays, the two main criticisms of stands and stand culture is that they are overly toxic and freakishly sexualize the content creators they are standing. While Arliss did not really have any stands from what I could tell, his community was very similar to the stereotypical community of stands. Even back in 2019, Arliss would tell his fans to harass people who did not like such as Yahia Mice. And according to a lot of the girls who spoke out against him, Arliss would also shit talk some of his fans on stream, causing them to get a lot of hate as well. Arliss also encouraged certain Twitter artists to draw not safe for work fan art of a character Arlet, which I'm too scared to google and I'm assuming is just a female version of Arliss. This behavior is very reminiscent of certain stand communities and I can't help but compare this terrible behavior to other creators. It is also possible that Arliss could have completely rejected his stands and ostracized them like he did to random people in his community. Or it is possible that since Arliss's racist behavior was kind of an open secret, that stands would shun him like they did with Jayslet. Arliss Finch will probably be remembered as a person who got just a droplet of fame and used it to hurt as many people as he could. The community gave him multiple chances to change his ways, but instead he found new ways to mess up over and over again. If Arliss ever learned from his mistakes and tried not to be such an asshat all the time, it is likely he would be one of the biggest Twitch streamers right now, especially if he continued his collabs with Wilbersit. Instead, he threw away his shot just to try and flirt with some teenage girls. If there is anything to take away from this story, just remember that you do not know the content creators you look up to online, and some may try and take advantage of you in a similar fashion to what Arliss did. Stay safe out there. Thank you.